Well, in the northern hemisphere, no more astronomical darkness. It's going to make astrophotography interesting with the DSLR. Makes it impossible almost to get a decent Milky Way shot. It can still be done ish. But there are other things we can image. We can just go out with our DSLR and photograph the International Space Station. All you need is an app. This is ISS Detector that predicts when the space station is going to be flying overhead for where you are. It can tell you what direction it's traveling. So you, all you need to do is find somewhere, set a camera up on the tripod, put the settings just for as if you were taking photos of the stars. So all you have to do then is just look at whatever focal length, like if you have a kit lens at 18 mil, then it's 300 divided by 18 will give you a rough idea of how many seconds you need to expose for if you're using a crop sensor. If you're using a full frame, it's 500, the 500 rule. And then wait for the International Space Station and shoot away. Take as many images as you can. And then we'll process them and turn them into one image like this. So, Let's go over to the computer and I'll show you the method that I personally use. There are many ways of doing it and there's even software out there that can do it for you. I'll just share the ways that I do it and see what you think. Come on. So here we are at our computer and we're going to use two programs, Sequitor and Paint.net. We'll use Sequitor for stacking our images and Paint.net for combining two layers to make one image. Here we have 12 images that I took last night of the ISS passing over. These are saved as JPEGs, but if you want them as high quality, then you can do everything we're doing here with raw files. So let's open our images. Double click start images. Click on the first one and then shift click on the last one. Select open. Then with output, double click output and give the file a name. We'll call it track. Now I'm just going to change that to a JPEG to speed things up. But if you want to keep the best quality for editing, I'd save it as a TIFF. But we're going for speed in this demonstration. Then Composition. We can choose Trails. Then I would select Enhanced Starlight and set that to the middle. And Start. And this is our first image, the track of the International Space Station as it goes over. Don't worry too much about artifacts and the way the image looks here. We'll be dealing with that on our next one, which is when we go to Output, double click. And we'll change the file name to Background. Composition will change to Aligned Stars, Freeze Ground, we'll select Sky Region Irregular Mask and we'll click on Auxiliary Highlight. And then here we have a Paint Mask, we're going to mask out the sky like this.
then we'll hit the start. OK, that's completed. Let's click Close. And we have a nice image here now of the stars in the sky and the foreground. So that's Close Sequitur. We go to Paint.net. We file Open and we select our two files and they've opened up separately here as you can see there we go, edit we select the track image, we go. edit select all Edit, copy, and then we'll go back to the background image. We'll go edit, paste into new layer. And then if we hit Control and D, we can deselect. So we have our two layers now the background layer with the stars and the foreground all nice and clean and the track layer with the track of the International Space Station over now we've got some gaps in between our different images so we can do something about that so if we click the zoom tool I'll pan tool and bring that over and zoom in We'll zoom to the bottom first. As you can see here, we zoom nice and close, there's a gap between these two. So we're going to select our clone tool, give a brush, brush, <laughs> brush width of 15. And then holding the control key on this bottom one here, go to a location like this, hit control, click. position our tool there, click. As you can see, it's joined the two up. Go back to the pan tool. Select clone. And we just keep going, filling in the gaps along the track. They're slightly off kilter like this. We can go Control Z, come back. And restart our cloning by choosing a new point. Control click. And there we go, that's our entire image and we go back along the track 
And what we're looking for is just any star trails. I've come too close. Let's see if we can get the eraser tool. Just erase them out. If you see something like this, this will be a star from the layer below. So don't worry about it. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to do is the magic wand tool. We want to use it to select the track. So we clicked on the track and we just want to travel all the way back up it to make sure the whole track has been selected. Excellent. View. Zoom to window. Edit. And invert selection. And then we'll go back to our eraser tool. And we'll choose a very large brush. start to remove everything else from the layer except for the track excellent then we'll press control and D and then we'll click merge layer down and there we have it our final image we go file save as call it final and let's have a look And there we go.